in introductory organic chemistry, there are certain questions that always seem to come up. One is about benzene. In benzene, we have double bonds. We have single bonds. Double bonds are stronger. They should be shorter. Single bonds are weaker. They should be longer. But in benzene, all the bonds are the same length. Why is that? You will be expected to know. The reason why the bonds in benzene are the same length is because the single and the double bonds interchange through resonance. Resonance builds on the concepts of pushing curly arrows. So the electrons move around in a circle around about the aromatic ring. Resonance comes up many times in introductory organic chemistry. For instance, in the acetate ion, the two oxygens appear different, don't they? There's a blue one here with a double bond to the carbon, and there's a red one with a negative charge. But in fact, the two oxygens appear perfectly equivalent, and the two bond lengths to those oxygens are the same. Can you explain that? Please, write down curly arrows to try to rationalize this. Why, Why is it esters protonate on the oxygen which bears the double bond, and they don't protonate on the oxygen bearing the alkyl group. So if I present a proton to say methyl acetate here, I know the best way to draw that protonation is by putting the proton onto the C double bond O oxygen. Why is that? Acetate protonates on the double bond carbonyl oxygen because when it does that, we can delocalize the lone pair of electrons on the other oxygen into the positive charge. However, if I protonate on the alkyl oxygen, then the positive charge has nowhere to move. It's stuck. There cannot be resonance. Let's compare phenol and cyclohexanol. They look almost the same, don't they? But phenol is far more acidic than cyclohexanol. Can you rationalize that? Phenol is far more acidic than cyclohexanol because the negative charge on the oxygen can be delocalized into the aromatic ring by resonance. We can push curly arrows to form a CO double bond, and that places the negative charge in the meta position, in the para position, and then in the other meta position. That stabilizes the counter ion. It makes the whole process of dissociating a proton that much easier. This acid base concept comes up in my next workbook in this series on acids and bases. Let's take this 1,3-dicarbonyl here. This is 2,4-pentadione. If I present a base to this, does it deprotonate on one of the terminal methyls to give this enolate? Or does it deprotonate in the middle on that methylene to give this enolate? Can you answer that question? Well, if I show the deprotonation of the terminal methyl group, that gives me an enolate where the negative charge can oscillate between one oxygen and one carbon. However, if I deprotonate on the methylene between the two carbonyls, then the negative charge can oscillate between one oxygen, back to the carbon, and then on to the other oxygen. In resonance, the longer the path length, the longer the wavelength of the energy, long wavelength energy is lower so that's the lower, more stable way to form the anion. More stable anions give you more acidic behavior. The methylene is more acidic than the terminal methyl. Let me pose you another problem, quite a tricky one. If I add an acyl chloride, let's say I take ethanoyl chloride and I react it with an amine. This is methyl isopropyl amine. The reaction is quite slow. But then if I try the reaction again, and this time add just a little tiny bit of 4-dimethylaminopyridine, DMAP, as a catalyst, the reaction speeds up. Can you rationalize that? Well, DMAP acts as a catalyst by getting isolated itself. But there are two possible sites where it can be isolated. One is the exocyclic dimethylamino group. If it isolates there, the positive charge is stuck. It cannot resonate with the aromatic ring because that would involve forming five coordinate nitrogen. However, if it isolates on the pyridine nitrogen, 
the positive charge can flip around the ring in the ortho, para positions and onto the exocyclic dimethyl amino as well. That's a much more favorable arrangement. Once the DMAP is acylated, that transfers the acyl group to the methyl isopropyl amine. It accelerates that reaction. And that's how DMAP acts as a catalyst, by acylating on the pyridine nitrogen in preference to the exocyclic dimethyl amino group. Good luck with your studies. Thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.